So let's talk about five strong 40k rules combos to come out of these recent rules and points changes, stuff that you might be soon to see on the other side of the table. Hello and welcome back to Warsmets Tactics, where today I thought it would be fun to look through a bunch of the strongest stuff to come out of the Nephilim rules and points changes, things that wasn't particularly good prior to the update, but now is looking really solid indeed. Let's talk through five different armies who have had powerful new rules or points buffs, an idea or two for some good combos to run in the army, and just how destructive or tough to shift it might be in game. First up we have the Foul Sons of Mortarion in the Death Guard Plague Marines. Death Guard players have been wanting the standard rank and file to be a bit stronger for quite a while now, maybe expecting something like a 1 point decrease or something like that, but Games Workshop rather interestingly just decided to wipe clean any points cost that they might happen to pay for their fancy plague gear, and it's maybe got more an impact on these guys than it has for armies like the Imperial Guard, as basically every single model can take a fancy special option of one sort or another, and what's more if you put all of them together they can actually create a really quite threatening combat unit, Almost pure melee Plague Marines do look like the best way to go, I think. The Plague Marine datasheet really is quite complex. It'll cost 210 points now, because they never cost any more or less. And now I think it makes sense to basically load up with two of most of the nastiest Plague combat weapons, or perhaps maybe some specials or heavies like Blight Launchers. For the Champion, they can take a Power Fist and a Plasma Gun for free now. The two really standout melee picks from the squad are Flails of Corruption, which you can take two of, Strength 5, AP 2, and Damage 2 doubling attacks to 6 attacks each, that's just a really solid all-rounder. And the other really nice one are Great Plague Cleavers, Strength 8, AP 3 and Damage D6 and minus 1 to hit, really quite solid for cleaving through armour. Otherwise you can throw in things like a couple of Bubotic Axes, Strength 6, AP minus 2, Damage 1 and like all Plague Weapons reroll 1 to wound, and a couple of Maces of Contagion as well, Strength 6, AP 1 and Damage 3, that you could strike with the Bubotic Axe that comes free with it. For the 10th model in the squad, I think it's more worth it to take something like a Blight Launcher over something like Plague Knives, and to be honest, in reality it might make sense to swap out, say, a Bubotic Axe for another Blight Launcher to give a bit more ranged threat as well. In any case, if you put all of this together, then the squad is ludicrously dangerous. All of them get Plague Knives as well, basically putting every single model up to 3 attacks base, and they can make all of those attacks with their primary weapon. Adding this squad together, and you're getting 86 points of free gear just thrown right in, once you've taken into account the cost of the squad originally, it equates to something like a 30% points drop, an absolutely enormous buff by 40k balance standards. Admittedly, a fair bit of the war gear wasn't entirely optimal, but a Plague Marine combat squad build wasn't actually the worst thing in the world. It wasn't all that durable compared with Terminators, but it hits significantly harder than Blight Lords for the points. Just for this base squad, you'll kill around about 19 Guardsmen, around about 6 or 7 Dead Space Marines with Armour of Contempt, or around 16 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. It's pretty generalist to be honest, there's not going to be all that much that's going to be able to laugh off the damage. I guess something like Armour of Contempt Terminators might be something that they struggle with some of the most. What's more, you can also amp this up with all sorts of other things as well. The Biologus Putrefiers Foul Infusion gives them mortal wounds on 6s, adds around about 4 wounds to the squad on average. Nearby Lords could give them rerolls to hit, or the Tallyman plus 1 to hit. Or the Arch Contaminator trait could give them full wound rerolls. They could get plus one strength from Psychic or reroll hits from Army of Renown. And they do have some easy access melee stratagems as well, such as 2 CP for plus one to wound, and a few other options that I think maybe aren't quite as strong as that. Even if you just use one or maybe two of these buffs, they're looking like a massive melee threat combined with the already good profile. And even if they lose a few models in the squad, most of their damage is concentrated in really strong ones, those Flails of Contagion and Great Plague Cleavers. It's kind of weird to have Plague Marines that are generally quite durable and hard to shift, suddenly going to arguably having better damage than they do durability now. In terms of getting them there, you could just field mass bodies of Plague Marines, advance them up the board until they get in charge range, or just sit on midfield objectives and dare the enemy to come close. Or you could potentially have a more mechanised force, pile them into a few Rhinos, get them where they need to be, and charge out from a battlefield bunker. Overall, I feel like these are definitely going to be seeing play. A very dangerous melee unit that's also durable, troops, and is objective secured, seems like a recipe for success. Next up, let's head over to the Necrons, where as well as getting much better command protocols, they also got core and a whole bunch of vehicles, including weirdly Sarek the Silent King. It makes him enormously more scary to allow really big boosts to affect his great profile, 
particularly when you combine that with him dropping down to 400 points, so being even more efficient than he was before. Firstly, it means that his Phaeron of Blades rule allows himself to reroll all wound rolls in melee. He can target another big core unit with this, such as, say, Triarch Praetorians, Lich Guard, or Wraiths. But if he is going to be getting tangled up in combat himself, then I think it's quite tempting just to use it on his own profile. He's pretty generalist in terms of what he can fight. Six attacks at strength 9, AP 3, damage 2. Four at strength 8, AP 4, and a big damage 3. And a few lighter ones at strength 5, damage 1. If he does choose to buff himself now, he'll be killing around 10 guardsmen, six or seven standard space marines with armor of contempt, or something like 17 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Unless you've got some serious durability buffs going on, he's often going to be wiping units. As well as this though, being core opens up a fair few other really strong options. I do find it quite funny that Illuminor Zeraz can now augment him, giving him the random buff of either plus 1 strength, toughness, or ballistic skill. In reality, I think this one's just a little bit random and not really to be relied on, but if he did accidentally fluke and get toughness 8 on him, then that's going to make him enormously more of a pain to shift. He's got 26 wounds total and a 4 plus invul save. Really though, the reason to keep Zeraz or a Zarek and Technomancer around though, is that they can resurrect the Meneers. I have seen a few people debating whether or not they can actually do this. It does say that they reanimate the Meneers. Some people are arguing that that means that he can't do that because he doesn't have reanimation protocols. Maybe it's loosely implied, but I think as it stands at the moment, it's legal to do so. It's certainly not clearly defined that at any point it actually needs reanimation protocols to reanimate this one model. Currently, I believe they're entirely separate rules, and Games Workshop didn't choose to FAQ it or anything when they dropped the update last week, so at the moment, I think it is possible. It's really quite a massive buff to his toughness, as those Meneers are a bit of a grind to get through, at toughness 7, 3+, plus, and a 4+, plus Imbol, and a 5 wounds apiece, which might mean that you'll lose some overkill damage. Plus, they also happen to come with a really big gun attached that's damage 6, and that's very nice to bring back into the fray. And they even have a helpful special rule, meaning that any incoming attacks must hit them rather than Zarek, even if Zarek happens to be injured already. Not sure if they might formally get rid of that with an FAQ at some point, but it seems at the moment that Necrons really are at peak reanimation fever. As well as that, there's plenty of other fun core things that you can do with him. He can actually make very good use of the Lord's reroll ones to hit. It means he'll basically be hitting on twos rerolling ones now, rather than just twos. And I think you can even theoretically Veil of Darkness him across the board, or cover him with the Hyper Material Ablator to give him an effective 2 plus save at range due to light cover. All in all, I'd be expecting to see the Silent King in really quite a lot of lists at the moment. He does seem ridiculously efficient. Talking of gaining core on things, I think that perhaps one of the slightly less exciting changes to come out of the datasheet is that Iron Striders are getting core back. I think people aren't so overwhelmed by this as they did used to have it, but certainly when Admech and Drukhari were ruling the roost, people were spamming anywhere up to 15 of these just because their firepower is so ridiculously effective. Admittedly, since that time they did go up in points a bit, they're now 85 points with the last cannons rather than 75, but with the Admech buffs that they can get, they're still spectacularly efficient. Their base firepower still remains good, say if you had three of them with the Twin Cognis last cannons for 255 points, that would get you six shots at strength nine and damage D3 plus three, even with no buffs whatsoever, that's something like 11 wounds to a toughness seven vehicle, or seven wounds to a hard target with a five plus invul and minus one damage. What makes it really good though, is that they've got a crazy long range, they might be able to outrange Melter and a lot of other return fire, and they're also on a very fast platform indeed, 10 inch movement should mean that they should be able to get the lines of sight that they need to, or jump out of cover to hit the units that they want. And if you need to get more movement, they've got that very helpful Dune Strider stratagem for 1 CP for an automatic 6 inch advance, and not taking the penalty for advancing with the Cognis last cannons. Their speed and damage is absolutely awesome, their durability is a little bit so so, but can be made better. Basically, then you can combine this damage with all manner of different layered Agmet buffs. Probably the single easiest is the Skatari Marshal with Exemplar's Eternity for reroll ones to hit and wound. That's going to be an instant, something like 35% damage boost right there. And he can apply that to multiple units with his auras. Other options could be the Magi Advance trait for exploding sixes to hit from turn two onwards. The Protector Doctrina for a plus one to hit, which you might be able to give with the Cantic Thralnet relic from the Veteran Cohort. Bulwark Doctrine for a plus one to save when you need it. Mars to get Canticles of the Omnisire and powerful rerolls on big last cannon shots, and potentially all manner of other broadcasted Skitari buffs. Falling back and shooting or receiving light cover, both are pretty helpful. 
Just for minimal investment, say if he had those same three stood next to a Marshall with Exemplar's Eternity, and they happened to be Mars giving you a single reroll, that suddenly goes up to 16 wounds to a Toughness 7 vehicle at crazy range, or around about 10 or 11 wounds to a hard target. As Mars, they should get another one where they can get some much better re-rolls with the Canticle of the Omnissire, and at least one turn of the Protector Doctrina. So on multiple turns, their damage output will be higher than this. He can even run multiple similar units next to the same Marshal, and fairly well hoover up most hard targets that are exposed. I must admit, giving these core back was a bit of a weird choice from Games Workshop, I think, particularly if they're not going to give the rest of the Admech motor pool some interesting things to help compete. It looks like it, we might be getting a bit further back to the Codex Iron Striders, Rangers and Rust Stalkers that seems to be the hallmark of Admech last year. Next up for the Astra Militarum, I was kind of tempted to talk about Bane Blades again, though I guess we did do an entire video on that the other week. Feel free to give that a search if you'd like to. Basically, you can get a 0 plus save on a Bane Blade, provided it's staying still. So even though it's nowhere near quite as good a damage output as Tank Commanders, it can be pretty ridiculously durable, saving AP3 things on a 2+, plus, at least until it moves. I think another really interesting thing out of the Guard update, though, was Tempestus Scions getting Hammer of the Emperor on their hotshot last guns, turning them from a unit that would likely chip off a few wounds off a lot of targets, to things that can bake tanks and heavy infantry to death quite efficiently. Hotshot last guns carried by 9 point scions are strength 3, AP minus 2, damage 1, rapid fire weapons, and they can get 2 rapid fire 2 if you use 1st rank fire, 2nd rank fire on them. Normally they would need to be within 9 inch range to rapid fire, which means that they often wouldn't be able to use that from deep strike, but there are a few different ways that you can potentially get them in that range fairly easily. Iotan Dragons just increases the range of their guns so they'll be able to drop normally. For one command point, you could use Iotan Gorgons to daring the center unit anywhere that's greater than 5 inches away from the enemy. Or you could use something like a Transport to deliver them, maybe a Torox Prime with a Gatling Cannon, or have them jump out of a Valkyrie with a Precision Drop perhaps. Those last two are far more investment, but at least you can use Land and Lions and the other damage boosts with them. You don't just have to go for those two above Scion Regiments. Still though, if you just want hot shots that you can absolutely spam, then the Iotan Dragons do seem to be the way to go. For 230 points, you could have two squads of 10 of them with hotshot last guns fall out of the sky alongside a Tempesta Prime. They can set up just outside 9 inches of their intended target, have all their hotshots within 12 inch range for 4 shots apiece with 1st rank, 2nd rank, and that winds up being 72 hotshot last guns plus 2 plasma pistols and maybe 1 for the Prime as well. With Hammer of the Emperor, all of that volume fire will auto wound on 6s, and an Alpha Strike could lead to something like 30 dead guardsmen. 6 dead space marines with armour of contempt, or something like 12 wounds to a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle with a 3 plus save. It's pretty mad that you can scrap most factions main battle tanks, just with sheer volume fire of high quality last guns. Realistically, if you did want a bit more damage output against the hard targets, it might well be worth buying in a few plasma or melter guns for 10 points each. The squads will certainly do a fair bit more to the vehicles or the space marines then, though it will be a bit more painful when they inevitably get deleted in return. Still though, even if you just kept them cheap with last guns, 230 points to set up 21 obsec bodies with a 4 plus armor save wherever you needed them, plus slightly delete something nasty, seems a really solid deal overall. Lastly, I thought it would be fun to take a second look at Orc Boys, now they got better in two different ways, going down from 9 points to 8, and getting a much better war. I'm still perhaps not 100% sold on them at being all that viable for a pure green tide, but maybe jumping out of transports and things, they do seem pretty scary. Certainly a lot of Orc players would be very happy if they were a fair bit more usable again. Going from 9 points down to 8 is quite a big deal on a Horde unit, and the way that the War was buffed means that it now gives you plus 1 strength on both turns of it, and also a 5 plus invul on the first turn, and a 6 plus on the second. It makes it far more tempting to build around, as you stack that on top of the extra attack on both turns, and advance and charge on the first. I initially thought that it might make the custom force field a bit more redundant in Orcs, Though someone pointed out to me in the balanced data slate video when I talked about it that you could potentially get a force field turn 1, use the stratagem to basically auto detonate it turn 1 and give a big aura of 5 plus invuls out to 9 inches. That could hopefully cover your army for the first turn that it's exposed and then the next turn the force field would be gone but you can just call the wire anyway, get the 5 plus invul for another turn and then still a 6 plus invul after that. It seems like you could easily have most of your orc army that's exposed have at least some in ball save all the way up to turn 3 if you did that. 
Between the points drop and the invul increase, it does mean that standard boys are actually massively harder to shift against certain firepower. In the turn that you call the war, say you had an orc boy unit that was being shot by an AP-1 or better gun, the fact that you get more of them for more points, and the fact that you've got a 5 plus invul save on those boys now, actually equates to a pretty crazy 70% durability increase, compared with the same investment in boys in the war before. That's only for one turn of course, and it's a bit less overwhelming if you did already have your 6 plus save, if you were being shot by AP0 or something, but still against a lot of firepower it is going to make standard boys a lot more of a pain to remove. Again if you were assuming that they were being shot by something AP-1, the 6 plus invul on the next turn still equates to a 35% durability increase, again that's including the points drop of 9 points down to 8, and gains extra toughness by adding more boys to the table. Overall it is a pretty solid boost. Then in terms of attack damage, just the conversion down to 8 points makes them uh, theoretically 12 points more efficient, which isn't bad. In general though, they'll be a lot more dangerous if the extra pip of strength causes something like a 4 plus wound to go to a 3 plus. Then against those kind of targets, after the changes, you've effectively gained an extra 50% damage. For example, if you had standard boys fighting against some normal space marines, previously 180 points worth of boys in the war would have got you 20 of them and would have killed somewhere around 4 or 5 space marines. Now with an extra pip of strength to get them to strength 5, and a few extra boys due to them costing less, you'd now be killing around about 6 or 7, which is a pretty big jump. I think at least on paper, 80 points worth of goth boys in the war do look really quite threatening. It's 80 points for a squad of 10, including the knob, and that nets you 41 attacks at strength 6, AP-1, damage 1. 6 is explode, and technically it is even better than that, because the knob gets some souped up attacks with extra strength, or maybe a fancy big chopper or something. Overall, I'll be expecting to see a fair few more boys or equivalents like Beast Snaggers or Storm Boys in lists. Being cheaper and extra damage and defence from the war does seem to have helped them out a fair bit, even if there are still disadvantages like morale and stuff. So I think we'll leave that there. I hope you've enjoyed a few fun combos that have come out of the Nephilim update. If you think that there was anything else that was worthy of talking about, maybe mention it down in the comments below. Maybe we can have a follow-up video at some point. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, with new ones out just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description if you're interested. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways, with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.